That's classic. We bring you great laughs and a unique behind-the-scenes look at classic television shows and movies. I'm John Cato. I'm an actor, voiceover artist, and also bring you an amazing insight as a moderator with over 20 years' experience in the television industry. I mean, this is funny as hell. Okay, here we go. Now, Joyce, we've, obviously we've been having some issues here, but your, your camera is showing a line through it, which means the camera has to come on. There, oh, now we can see the, the camera's on. But there's no audio. No audio. Oh, I know what you were doing before. I think you were dialing, calling us. Do you have another phone that you could call us on? No. Because that's one thing she could do is she could try a different phone. Um, if she has a different phone, she could call in on that. Is, is, is Joyce, is this your only phone? Is that is this your only phone? <laughs> Welcome to Pantomime by, by Joyce. <laughs> These are her chairs, as you can see. Very nice chairs. Class, we, we like them, Joyce. We like them. Okay. Um, by chance, do you have another phone or or uh, an iPad or uh, two string, uh, two cans and a string? <laughs> yeah. A computer. By chance, you know, even like a lab, a laptop. Any of those we could try as well. It's a nice poster. Welcome to Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. <laughs> We're at the lovely Joyce Boulevard's house. This and she has coffee table allows her to see everyone's lap. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. That is that is clear. Well, now what's yeah? So we have the camera. We just don't have we we don't have the. I want, that's so weird. I wonder what would stop her from not. Uh, oh, look at the what? Oh, is that the dog? Yeah. The dog is so still, you wouldn't know. Oh, yeah. Here we have her lovely kitchen. <laughs> oh, well, uh, Joyce, is is it only your phone that you can dial in with? Like, do you have an iPad? Which it's looks like you right might have an right. iPad over there, over in the corner. Is that an iPad? No, it looks like a. Or, or maybe it's one of those. Coffee maker. Oh, is that a coffee maker? I was looking I at the flat part of it. If that could possibly be. Well, she's trying. She is trying hard. Bless she's you. trying so hard, and we want to talk to her so bad. Well, so funny. They don't have a they don't have a um, a button to get everybody. All all you can do is is um, you mean for the host? Yeah, yeah. All they all they show you is as, uh, ask all to mute, unmute themselves, allow participants to unmute themselves. I've got right. that checked. Um, play join and leave sound. I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know. It's not on my. It's not on my end. Can you grab looking. me a wire there? What was that? <laughs> oh, we're going places. Yeah, I think she, I think she thinks it's the uh, reception in the house, but I don't think it is. I don't think it oh, is I, either. Oh, I don't think it's the fun. reception in the house. Oh, wait, she's getting to a computer, though. Oh, that is a computer. OK, Joyce, it's a good idea. Yes, I like it. Oh, something's happening. Oh, she's dying. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, Joyce, go. It looks like you're now. You're, you're, now we'll, yeah. we'll, let, we'll let, allow her to get on. If yeah, she's already yeah, here, here. You're coming on right now. Yeah, what will happen is she'll have her phone screen and that, but we can get rid of one of them if possible. Oh, now, Joyce, I've got you. I've got the new one is showing that your camera isn't on. 
So in the corner of that screen, you know, at the bottom left, left hand corner, it should say stop video and or start video. I'm here. Oh yes. my gosh. Now you have to turn off your phone. Oh my gosh. That is Joyce. <laughs> All right. Joyce. I'm Joyce. sorry. I'm not... <laughs> no, it's, 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 it's okay, but I'm sorry. We're out of time. Thank you so much. <laughs> It was so nice to talk with you both. You, listen, you were a delight as always. One of the best I am, entrances I I've ever it. seen. What? That was one of the best entrance, entrances to our podcast of anyone I've ever seen. No doubt By about it. By the way, I just, I just have to share. I know that bedroom because you and I have done a Zoom before. I what, did we do Hollywood Squares together for Far Harlem? Yes, yes, that's, yes. That's, that's, don't take this the wrong way, but that's why I know your bedroom. Okay. <laughs> oh, you remember because I couldn't do it then? Well, what happened is for some reason, the mouse on my computer wasn't working. And yeah. then my dear friend, Carol, figured out you put the keyboard in and then it worked, right? I mean, hey. I am, you know, I'm deaf, blonde, and dyslexic. What do you want? Oh, listen. <laughs> It's, it's, it's working and, and yay. Yeah, it's all good, Joyce. It's all good. And by the way, thank you so much for the tour of the home. It was beautiful. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I was going into the guest bedroom looking for my office. I was so confused. Excuse right, the mess in the back. I'm trying not, to get organized. It'll never a, happen. Not, <laughs> oh my gosh. Not, not, not a problem. At least, at least it's working. Hi, Joyce. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Good, how are you? <laughs> hey, Joyce. Hello. <laughs> happy Sunday. Happy, happy. Happy Sunday. And Joyce, listen, thanks a bunch for being on That's Classic. I want to say that right away. <laughs> we normally do kind of a, <laughs> a bit of an introduction to our guest, but I don't know. I thought that was a pretty good introduction. Um, um, you know what? It's called live TV and or spontaneity, but- it, Are we on live? Well, no, 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 well, no, no. <laughs> no, we're not, hey, we're not hey. live, we're not live, <laughs> we're not, <laughs> wow, this is a, one of the oh, better, ones. anyway, oh, Joyce, yeah. um, yes. just for our audience, I'll just say, look, today's guest is Joyce Boulafont, she has got an amazing career, uh, you, you will know her from Mary Tyler Moore, she was uh, Maurice uh, Slaughter, on uh, Mary Tyler Moore and she, Match Game, going back to an incredible career. Well, we will get into it. But anyway, it's a thrill to have you on the show, Joyce. She is a, she is a, a thrill to be here. And she's, a, and she's a tech expert, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yes. And expert. I'm working now with lighting, and I'm not doing very well. But You're I'm doing great. great. Oh, my God. You look oh, fantastic, I'm Joyce. In the dark? Am I, I'm not in the dark? No, you no. look really good. My Honestly, whole life great. I've been in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So you look great. I, I will say that you look terrific. Really? You, you can yeah. see. Yeah, yeah, absolutely can you, terrific. Can you see all the wrinkles and everything? No, you look great. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. You have an energy that you've always had this energy. I got to tell you, Bob and I, before you came on, we were talking about just fact. I mean, I don't care anything I've ever seen you in a regular interview. Going back to Mary Tyler Moore, you always have this incredible energy about you. Well, what can I tell you? I take vitamins. There you go. There you go. <laughs> That's it. Okay, so why don't we get started here? Um, to start out, a lot of times... I we did about <laughs> <laughs> I do think you should keep that. That's kind oh, of totally. Scary. Oh, no. 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 I didn't initially, and then I was like, Bob was right. We had we got to put that on. It was too funny. It's, it is classic. <laughs> it is, th thank you. Well said. <laughs> Okay, so a lot of times we ask, like, when uh, you know you're on certain shows, what what was that experience like? Well, what was? Do you remember when you auditioned for the Mary Tyler Moore show, or did you? I don't even know if you did. You know what? I'm not sure I did, um, which is very strange. I was doing a Bill Cosby show, his first one, when he was a uh, basketball coach. Right. And I was a school guidance counselor. And uh, Ed Weinberger, who wrote the Mary Tyler Moore show, wrote on the, uh, Ed Wein, Weinberger, yeah. He wrote, was a writer on the Mary Tyler Moore show. He wrote that episode. And I guess he liked the way I did it. 
So he suggested me for Marie, Murray's wife. And I can't remember, I may have had a meeting with Ethel Weiner. Oh, I'm so bad at names. Okay. Um, I'm really bad. Uh, and I don't know if I read it or they just said, okay, we met you, we think you'll be fine. I, I can't remember. Had, Isn't that had, funny? Well, no, not, no. I mean, you've done so much. I'm not too surprised. Ethel but, Weiner, that's her well, name. Do you know if, well, obviously you know this, but did you know Gavin McLeod before then? I didn't, no. And he became just the best friend. We lived around the corner from each other here in the desert. And we did a lot of um, benefits together for- I, a did, I, did one, I did one with you. We did that live radio in that theater, you and me and Roger. Oh yeah. And, Gavin and I think right. Roger came back. You remember that? And it was so yeah. much fun we were doing like like live radio to an audience there was no it was radio that's but, right we were but it was so and and greg oppenheimer it was so much fun wasn't it wow. fun it was so much fun and i just i just um just, your voice you, you must do voiceover you've got to do tons of voiceover your voice is uh, made for i used to but then somebody came along who mimicked my voice I should have insured my voice. I should have are, copyrighted it. Are you I, serious? I yeah. And um, yeah, I'm very serious. And then I was so involved in television and movies and things that I am theater that I never kind of went back to it. And one thing I loved doing was a voiceover for a cartoon called Sport Billy. And I love doing that because you get you have to be able to play, I think, six different characters. And I didn't know I could do that. I mean, so I got, I, it was funny. They, they give you the script and suddenly you do it. Yeah. And, and they said, the one thing we're going to have to get somebody else to do uh, the evil witch. And I said, why? I, let me try it. And they said, with your voice, I said, well, just let me try it. And they said, okay. So people would come and watch me do it because I couldn't do it unless I got into the thing, you know, side, you know, and come. It was so much fun. Yeah, I, I could but totally that see. That was the only that. one I ever did, and I, I would love to do more, but I'm not asked to do it, and I haven't put myself out there to do it. If you know anyone, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> see what I can do. I think okay. you might know a few people. Just a I'll few. give you two percent. I'll, 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 I'll take one. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so Joyce, let's talk a little bit about Mary Tyler Moore because obviously there's a lot of fans out there. They want to know, there, and unfortunately, I mean this in the best way, unfortunately, there aren't too many cast members left, you know? I know, I know. It's a very funny feeling. Yeah, yeah. Thank it's heaven. sad, but yeah. yeah. But I, um, it's sad for me losing friends. It's it very is. sad, but... I, that's life. And my, as my granddaughter, when she was seven years old, she said, Lala, don't be sad about your friends dying because you know, everybody has to have a turn. Wow. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's really at cool. At seven years old. Oh, no kidding. Wow. wow. Yeah. What, and I what, always thought, wow. What insight. Wow. Um, she quite something. When you were, when you were on Mary Tyler Moore, um, so I mean, honestly, I'm sure that you've been asked this a billion times, but really, what was it like working with this cast? This was not just the, your average cast. This was <laughs> amazing. It um, was, what was well, it like working with Mary? Well, Mary, um, Mary was very good. You know, she was excellent in, in that role. She was not kind of a warm and fuzzy person. Mm -hmm. So um, it was difficult to be close to her, really. I think I was closer to her at the beginning when, when I first came on than later. And it was a little difficult for me because I would have to, I was doing several shows. So I had to be reoccurring. I couldn't always be there when they wanted to write me in. So a lot of times they talked about Marie, but I wasn't there. Yeah. And then I think maybe that's why they got Georgette as because uh, she could do it more often. And she was wonderful. She was great, but sort of the same kind of character in a way. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. what was fun for me was because I would go away and do other shows and come back, 
as, as time went on, each of those people in the cast became in person the person they were portraying. <laughs> oh, wow. I, I, remember, I remember coming back and uh, Ted Baxter, Ted Knight saying to me, Troy, they, uh, they remodeled my dressing room. You want to come see it? <laughs> Just <laughs> a really funny guy. And I couldn't, I couldn't play, my desk was falling apart, excuse me. I couldn't play tennis with him. We lived across the street because he had the funniest serve I have ever seen. I never saw anybody wind up and bounce a ball and serve the way he did. I would be laughing so hard by the ball, the time the ball got across the net, I was bent over in laughter. <laughs> wow. And he was very, he was very serious about it too. <laughs> sweet man, so sweet. And oh, wow. Valerie well, how, about Ed? how about Ed Asner? Ed was great. I mean, gruff old guy. And, uh, but underneath, anytime I was doing a fundraiser for dyslexia, which was quite often, he would volunteer to come. He played Edison in a, uh, a musical I did about dyslexia called Gifts oh. of Greatness. And I do remember sitting next to him though in a Screen Actors Guild meeting. And he got very hot under the collar and I said, I'm going to leave now. <laughs> wow. Yeah, no, he was very um, dedicated to his beliefs. Let's yeah. say that. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was, it's a shame we were we were going to have him on the podcast, and unfortunately, it, it, he passed away recently. And yeah, yeah. it didn't, didn't work out. But yeah, without a and doubt, Gavin, my dear Gavin, you know, people say, I never heard this person say a bad word about another person. And usually that's kind of baloney. Right. In Gavin's case, it wasn't. He found the good in everybody and everything. He really did. It was absolutely amazing. He could see the worst show in the world and say, wasn't that fantastic? I mean, not that he would not have good taste, but he would find what was good about it. And he was that way with people. It was only one time that he sort of was on the edge about that. Um, but he didn't say anything bad, but we mm. were doing, Ed and Gavin and I were doing a luncheon and then a panel show for the Walt Disney Fan Club. Oh, wow. And, um, <laughs> and, and we were having lunch before we did the panel. And as we were walking into lunch, Gavin took me aside. He said, will you sit between me and Ed because He's an atheist. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. So I'd, I'd be happy to. And I wasn't saying anything bad. It just wasn't what he believed. Right. <laughs> so, I think, Gavin, wasn't he, wasn't he a, a Catholic? No, he wasn't Catholic. Well, as, and, as I knew him, he wasn't. Hmm. I thought, but yeah. he was very kind of more newborn. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. When, when we did, when gotcha. we did that, that radio, when we did that radio thing, Ron Masak uh, was a neighbor of mine growing up. You know, and, we did a TV show together. Uh, I, I, you did. You worked with everybody. <laughs> worked, I don't think there's anybody you didn't work with. Literally, but, but, or uh, married, or married. Or, right. Well, we're gonna <laughs> get. You've got a whole book about it. We're gonna get there. <laughs> but but I walked I walked up to Ron and I said, would you? Would you introduce me to to, to Gavin? Because I was just a little nervous and starstruck. Well, Gavin heard me, and he uh, walked he walked up to me. He goes, "Don't be nervous. Don't be." Ner and he was wearing shorts. He goes, "Look at these legs. Nothing, to be <laughs> nothing to be nervous about. These are an old man's legs. Trust me." That's and, so cute. And so sweet. And he was because you know I was just I was just doing you know I was I was the utility voice. I was just doing a whole bunch of vocal effects and sound effects things like that. And he was just so endearing about introducing me around. And so he was a delight. He was, a, and again, yeah. you guys, you guys were neighbors. You guys were neighbors in Palm Springs. Yes, we were neighbors and we saw a lot of each other socially. Yeah. And also, uh, I got to present him with an award once. And then one time he was getting an award and I thought I, I had kind of a sad day with a friend who was uh, very ill. 
-hmm. And I said, I just, I can't go. I'm just so, I'm wiped out from being with his friend. And then I thought, I've got to go. I've got to be there for him. But it's a good thing I did because it was my birthday and they wheeled out a cake as big as what they give to the president. You know, oh, the my gosh. oh my gosh. Like somebody could have jumped out of it. It was right. that day. It's a good thing I went. It just shows you, you need to put that effort out for your friends. You know? That's cool. And so, I did get to see him right before he passed. And that's uh, good. he was in hospice. I was living in Colorado and I flew in to see him. And I leaned over the bed to give him a kiss on his forehead. And he started singing a song that Roger had written that we did in a musical together. And mm -hmm. if only for a moment I could hold you again. If only for a moment I could kiss you again. And the two, down his eyes and my eyes and Patty's eyes. Oh, uh, what, a sweet, what a sweet goodbye that was. Oh my gosh, that is a sweet goodbye. Yeah, it's it doesn't get much more touching than that, actually. I wow. know. Wow. Um, I had to ruin my car that day. I was so anxious to get there, and I I drove right into a post as I was parking. Just oh no! Every time I see the car, the dent in the front of the car, I go, "Thank you." Right. <laughs> wow! Wow! Hey, okay. So you brought up the four husbands or five um, husbands. I'm sorry. I don't want to. I know. Don't want to so cut that off. Embarrassing. Um, no, not at all. Yes. I, I no. Yes. Um, no. <laughs> um, well, you wrote the book about yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. How embarrassing was that? Come on. I know. Well, it it is. A, you know, the book that I wrote was supposed to be titled "Home Sweet Home." Where is it? Because mm -hmm. I've lived in so many different places. Yeah. But then a friend called and said, I got the title for your book. And I said, what? And he said, my four Hollywood husbands. I said, that is absolutely disgusting. I would never title my book that. And then I thought, yeah, but it might sell books. <laughs> yeah. but then Absolutely. I had to take a whole different direction because it was really about the homes and being a, child, a lot of that. And I thought, well, if I'm going to write about this experience, which is embarrassing to me that I had to be married so many times. I'm going to write about what I think might help other women and families or anyone in a relationship, any man, any family, anyone. Uh, so in doing that, I decided to tell the truth about being married to someone who had the disease of alcoholism mm -hmm. and about being a codependent person, which I am which only feeds into that disease. So it was the, the divorce was as much my fault as it was the fault of the disease of alcoholism and my disease of being a codependent, a codependent person. But the main thrust of, the, the whole, of telling that was to, to talk about the harm it does children, you know, whether it's right. physical or mental abuse, it, that scar stays there. And, and that is the thing that makes me the most sad about being a mom is that I didn't choose wisely in that way. And that my ego, I think, was so big. I thought, Lord, if I love this person, they're not going to need to drink because they know what I love them. <laughs> right, know? right. It's not, it doesn't work that way. Well, let me let me ask you about uh, uh, James MacArthur as the, the first. That was your first husband. Um, also, I happen to be an actor that I, uh, as a kid, I loved in like so did I. <laughs> and Swiss Family Robinson. And did were that, you, yeah, were you with him at that time? Yes. Well, we met when we were fourteen years old. Oh so, no! I knew you met in college. I didn't know you met in in high school. Yes, and uh, I just thought he was, um, you know, he. he he was cute, but he was mean. And uh, he was, sometimes he was perfect and sometimes he was just awful. And um, I was going with someone two years older. And then when that person two years older broke up with me, he came over at a picnic one day and he said, uh, listen, I'm sorry about you and Mike. You wanna go to the movies tonight? And I said, oh, okay. And I thought, why is he being so nice? You know. He was a perfect jerk, sometimes perfect, sometimes a jerk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he did have a drinking problem early on. 
even and, then at like 16 or wow yeah. and i thought you know his mother was a famous actress and she was Ellen Hayes. and i thought he just needs me to love him and he'll mm. be fine and we had two wonderful children you know it could have been the best marriage in the world we traveled you talked about seeing his movies we traveled all over the world together i mean we went around the world and and we were in our 20s and did you go to, were you on the island with that they were on for swiss family robinson were you there i was there and everybody for six months oh everybody was everybody was being creative and i thought i'll be creative so i got pregnant that's creative there you go <laughs> You mean you got for for real? You got you you got pregnant on the island that the they shot with family Robinson, and then and that was Charlie, my first child, and then my second child, Mary. Uh, I got pregnant in England on I think what it was he doing there, the Bedford incident, I think. Wow, wow, that's amazing. What you know? Not that I want to you know have the whole thing to talk just about him, but I am curious. What was that like being on that island while they were filming? I mean, especially at that time to Tobago? <laughs> it was interesting. I mean, um, Polly Nanakin, a uh, very English dear friend of mine and my daughter's godmother, uh, Ken Anakin, the director, uh, <laughs> we would play cards at night. And Jimmy was wonderful when he was working. He didn't have that need to drink. Mm -hmm. And he knew who he could drink in front of and who he couldn't. And they never suspected anything, the Anakins. And at that time, you didn't talk about that with anybody. Mm -hmm. you, didn't, you didn't let people know your problems like that. Right. And uh, it, it was fun. We used to make lunch for, for Ken and Jimmy and drive out to the set and, and then swim on the beach. And I don't know, it was, it was great fun. We go to the marketplace. If you wanted to get meat, you went with a basket, and you stood in a in the town square up on a platform, and they'd have this meat hanging with flies all over. It. Oh, geez! And you'd say, "I like a piece of that." And they'd take a machete and go whack, and you catch it in your basket. And then Pauline, <laughs> being English, she said, "And then we must go home and wash it in vinegar right away." <laughs> I, I'm with her. I'm with her on that. <laughs> What about your uh, your your mother in law at the time, Helen Hayes? Were you close with her? Very, very close. It was. Um, I do a show called "Remembering Helen Hayes with Love." I saw and that. Yeah. You did see it? I didn't see. I didn't see it. I saw when I you when I, I did research. I was Where, like, "Are you That's in interesting?" New, are you in New York? No, uh, L.A. You're in well, L.A. You're that close. Bob and I are both in L.A. Yeah, I know. We we could have carpooled and we could have. Why had, didn't you come over? I know. Easier. We could, <laughs> it would have been much easier. <laughs> it would it would have been. <laughs> well, because I, I was going to say, I'm going to do it in Nyack, New York, in October this year. Mm, okay. I mean, I, we're doing a Helen Hayes, Charlie Charles MacArthur weekend because wow. they're going to make Pretty Penny the name of their home there a literary landmark because oh, Helen wrote several books and Charlie was a great screenplay writer and a book, he wrote a book. And uh, we're going to do two of their films and a panel of friends who visited at Pretty Penny and I'm doing Remembering Helen Hayes with Love. Oh, wow. benefits for local charities. So won't that be nice? Very, uh, what was she like? What was Helen Hayes like? Like, you know, I mean, obviously everybody knows her you know, from right. screen, what was she really like? There's a poem that's perfect, that suits her perfectly. There was a little girl who had a little curl right in the middle of her forehead. And when she was good, she was very, very good. And when she was bad, she was horrid. <laughs> <laughs> and then she would, when she would get into a bad temper, Lillian Gish, her best friend and my fairy godmother, I call her. Oh, you knew um, Lillian Gish too? Oh. I know. It's amazing. The, the, yeah. And Elsa Lanchester, I had oh. these wonderful women. Icons. Yeah, who took me under their wing. I was so sweet. But um, 
<clears throat> Lillian said about Helen and her temper, oh, darling, oh, don't worry when she's like that. It's just the Irish in her. <laughs> I love that. I yeah. love it. Okay, look, if you're going to throw out Elsa Lanchester, I mean, yes. honestly, I mean, what a personality. What what was Elsa, Elsa Lanchester like? I adored her. There was a wonderful friend named Ray Henderson, and he lived in her house in what was called a studio. So they called it the schoolroom. And Ray taught voice there, and um, he played for her when she went on the road to cabaret acts and things. And a lot of people, especially at the American Academy where I studied, they didn't want me to take singing lessons because they said, it's gonna change your voice. And that's, that's your trademark. At the, oh, I didn't yeah. know what they were talking about. I, I think I sound like everybody else, you know? So I never get it when people say, I knew it was you <laughs> for your yeah. voice. Um, so they didn't want me to take singing lessons. But when I was gonna sing in movies and different shows, I got nervous, I had no training. And Ray said, just come to the school room that they call the school room. And he had a little room in back where he slept and, he, and the piano and he would, he said, I just want you to sing. Just come and keep singing, you need, need to sing. Uh, okay, and Elsa would come down and she would listen. Wow. And sometimes she'd get up and do a little thing for me. And then I go in the kitchen and I have tea with her Irish housekeeper and with her. She wasn't very fond of Helen, but she loved Lillian. <laughs> it's wow. very funny. And then she wrote a book. She was married to Charles Lawton, you know. Yeah, and she, yeah. She wrote a book and um, it made me very sad because she, the way that, her passing happened was um, just the way she didn't want it to, that she wrote in the book. And she, Ray had passed away and she was, he, he was like a son to her. And, and they wouldn't tell her that he had died. And when I would come to visit her, she loved, um, it was not Avon, but I think Revlon, uh, there was a certain cream she loved and I'd bring it to her and put it on her face for it because she couldn't move. Mm -hmm. And they wouldn't tell her that Ray had passed and, and they forbid me to tell her. And when she'd see me, she'd try to talk and I knew she wanted to know. Wow. And, and I couldn't tell her, you know, and I was forbidden by the doctor and the nurses. And I thought that's not kind. Yeah. It's kind of cruel. No, that's, that is cruel. Her, you know, so, so that made me very, that's not a, I, I like to think of her having tea in the kitchen. <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. What, one other, uh, I mean, I loved looking up, I got to tell you, it's always fun as part of this podcast too, even though I know a lot about your background to actually just sit down and then just kind of go over it and look through things. And one of the things that I loved was um, you did an Alcoa Presents Mr. <laughs> Lucifer. Yes couple of things there. One, Fred Astaire as Mr. Lucifer, and then you have Elizabeth Montgomery as the assistant, who then you end up married to Bill Asher. And obviously there's the that book. connection. It's all in the book. It's all in the book. I mean, really, <laughs> how, how crazy is that? You know? I know? You know, my life has been such serendipity. It just, every day I am amazed how one thing hooks into another. Just recently, yesterday, a, a girlfriend of mine said, she came over for coffee in the morning. And she said, um, Joyce, how does that prayer go? You teach children, now I lay me down. To, and I froze. And I said, Marley, I can't believe you just said that. Because for two days ago, I started saying that as part of my prayer at night. Oh, wow. I just, and and I, I, I just, but that happens all the time. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know if you, you put that out there and the energy, you were talking about energy. Yeah. And, and I think about the energy that, that leaves when someone passes, you know, they've measured that energy and it's the weight of a hummingbird. Oh, and wow. death, they've measured the energy that leaves the body. 
That's and, a beautiful. And that's why I have I have such faith that that we're surrounded by our loved ones in that field of energy. Wow. So, so so let me ask you, which husband is with you right now? Roger, always. There you go. Oh, by yeah. the way, he was also so sweet to me. He was such a dear, dear, dear guy. Well, that's one thing about the book that love story weaves all through the book. Mm -hmm. And talk about serendipity, how we got to be together finally. How, how did you? Oh, that's partly in the book, or is it all? I had, there's somebody in the book that isn't, meant, that has a paragraph that maybe should have just had a sentence. Um, okay. <laughs> But it was a time that uh, was very weird in my life. And I knew that I was doing the wrong thing. My friends said, you're doing the wrong thing. And I married him for two months. And he was, I don't want to say bad things because he's kind of strange. <laughs> and um, so during that period, we were in LA and I called my friend Norman who was also Roger's best friend. And we were always in touch. Norman always let me know where Roger was and, and he always let Roger know where I was. There was always that energy, whatever, mm -hmm. between us that even though I was in love with my other husbands, he was always part of me. We dated after Jimmy and I were divorced, we dated for a year. And it was the most fun year. And then he broke up with me. Wow. wow. And he thought, he, he wanted to move in with me and not be married and have a baby. And that's when people were doing that. But mm -hmm. not me. I am very scared that way. And I had two little children. I was like, ah, no, you're backing up the wrong tree here. And uh, so th that he always thought that after six months, I'd come back to him and everything be fine. Instead, I married one of his best friends. <laughs> and wow. I expected him to come running down the aisle going, no, she loves me. <laughs> but that wow. didn't happen. Um, and so our paths kept crossing. But then after this being with this man for two months, which was pretty scary, I called Norman because we were in LA and we never even had a home together, this man. And I called Norman and I said, I don't know what to do. I'm really frightened. And he said, oh, by the way, did you know that Joanne has left? I mean, Rogers left Joanne. And I said, no, is he? My first thought was, is he okay? Mm -hmm. I just wanted to know that he was always okay. And because I cared about it. I didn't want to be with him because he had a drinking problem. I knew he did. Mm -hmm. But by then he'd gone to Betty Ford and had been sober for four years. And sometimes when people get help and they become well, they're, they're mates. It isn't the same relationship anymore. Suddenly, suddenly the mate feels displaced because they don't have that person that they've felt maybe more powerful then or more, uh, had they had more control, suddenly that person becomes well and you're not with a sick person anymore and the relationship changes. It, it mm. happens quite often, I've heard. Um, anyway, so I said, oh my gosh, could I call him? Is that is that okay? I just wanna make sure he's okay. And he said, I'm not supposed to give anyone his number but I think he'd like to hear from you. <laughs> so I called him and I just said, are you all right? And I'm thinking about you and I, I hope everything's okay. And, and I told him about me and being very frightened. And he said, um, told me that what he thought I should do so I wouldn't be dangerous. And uh, it ended up being quite dangerous because he, he stalked me and uh, it was kind of scary. But uh, then Roger and I got together after that, but it was very strange because when you have that person in your heart for so many years and you finally get to be with them, it was scary. It was, it was like, 
oh my gosh, well, what do we do? <laughs> and I remember we just went to the movies, we had hamburgers and we did that for a while. And then my, it, the, his finality and his situation was over and then mine was over and then we were together. And then one day we were, we rented a house in Colorado because I had two children that lived there. And he said, I, I said to him walking along, do you, do you think we'll ever get married? And he said, yes. I said, oh, really? When? He said, April. I said, really? I better get on the phone and start arranging it. <laughs> wow. So you, you, well, kind of, you kind of proposed and he went along for the ride. Was, <laughs> by the way, was, it, was it April? Was it April? It was April. April That's so cool. That's yeah. so cool. That's April really neat. Yeah. It was great. Okay, so I have to circle back, which okay. often happens with these things. But uh, I got to know about a few of these people. Fred Astaire, what was Fred oh, yeah, Astaire that's like? That's what we're talking about. Oh my gosh, the sweetest, sweetest man you ever want to meet. I mean, I just imagine when my agent called and said, how would you like to do a show with Fred Astaire? I said, okay, why are you calling? He said, no, how would you? I said, no, really, I mean, I was doing a Perry Mason. I said, no, really, I got to get back to the set. What do you want? He said, you don't want to do a show at Fred Astaire? I said, Ron, are you kidding? I mean, are you kidding? He said, and you get to dance with me. I said, are you really kidding me? I can't believe it. You I mean, dance with Fred Astaire? Not only did I dance with him, I thought it, I, I imagined he was going to, I was going to wear a lovely chiffon dress and he'd be lifting me in the air in the ballroom and, you know, the first ginger, then Joyce. <laughs> and, <laughs> and instead, it was the twist. Oh, with <laughs> Fred right, Astaire. <laughs> right before we were supposed to do the twist, he said, Miss Bullifant, he kept calling me Miss Bullifant. I said, oh, Mr. Astaire, don't call me Miss Bullifant. And he said, come here, come here, come here, behind the set. He said, you've got to teach me how to do the twist. I don't know how to do the twist. I said, Mr. Astaire, you want me to teach you a dance? Oh, wow. <laughs> so I taught him how to do the twist in about two seconds. He was out there doing it better than anybody I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course, of course. He couldn't even walk without dancing. I mean, yeah. he walked with such grace. And, and then I was at a, a dance, a, a charity dance. And he was a year or so later. And he cut in and he said, Miss Bullifant, I don't know if you remember me. My name is Fred Astaire. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is too that's funny. That's what he was like. He was wow. Like, wow. That's, so, him, that's him in a nutshell. That oh, cool. that's pretty cool. Was so obviously, so Elizabeth Montgomery is his assistant in this in this production, or, or he's or the wherever. evil one. I'm the good one. Well, <laughs> And we are talking about the production. No, anyway, um, what, what, what was? Do, did you have any? I mean, did you have much interaction with her? I mean, oh, at yes, that time? yes. What, what was and, she like? Because that was early on in her for her too, yeah. right? Oh, she was fun. She's lots. She was lots of fun. And I remember one day for some reason, and I don't know why, she was wearing a bikini in the in the show, and I remember. <laughs> I don't know what possessed me to do that. There was some gag or something we had going. Otherwise, I don't think I would have done it. But I took a banana and stuck it down the back of her bikini. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but we laughed. We, we joked around. Who would have ever guessed that in the future, I would be raising three of her children? <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. I mean, I really, know. that is literally crazy. Um, and I feel absolutely blessed that she let me be so much a part of their lives. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's pretty yeah, cool. That's great. Yeah. I love them all. We're all very close. Very, very close. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's really cool. Um, so, you know, like Bob said, it, you've been on so many things. Literally, I have them all flying through my head right now. I, it's just because there's so many, so many that I've, I, of these people that I love, but one that I saw that was kind of a random, just thrown out there was the Donald O'Connor uh, show. Oh, what was Donald O'Connor like? I mean, I, I haven't talked to too many people that actually, you know, were with him. 
Um, I, I liked him. I mean, I think I did a song on his show. Did you see it? No, I, I did not see it. it. You didn't? Um, how do you know about it? My goodness. <laughs> I do. I, like I said, I do my You're best scary. to research as deep <laughs> as scary. I can. Yeah. I think I sang a song to them in it. I came out and I sang, would you take me out Saturday night? <laughs> would you keep me out all night? And if I kiss you, it's all right. As long as you hold me tight. I think that's what I sang to them. Okay. Wow. That's, that's pretty cool. And, and and your 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 memory is astounding. You, you astounding know, you, uh, for my age, yes. No, 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 no. <laughs> for my age. I'm just I'm just like because I don't remember what I did this morning for breakfast. Oh, I this mean, morning is different. This morning. Oh, okay, is all right. We're talking saw, about short term so memory. <laughs> I, I I have to ask a question because I went to high school with Robbie Wrist. You have oh. been you've been Robbie Wrist's mother several times. And sort of wife too. Oh, what? that's right. Because of Big John, Little John. Right. Well, that that was that. Yeah, that was um, uh, that was. He yes. was actually my husband. Uh, so so that is uh, crazy. So was so Big John, Little John. That was that was uh, that was Sherwood Schwartz, wasn't it? Yes, it was. And he was that a was that a consolation prize for not getting Carol Brady? It certainly was. He oh, that promised. Was he promised the next thing he did, I was going to be in it. It happened to be a Saturday morning children's show, but he made that promise and I carried through with Herb Edelman. But when Herb Edelman drank from the Fountain of Youth, he became Robbie Riz. Yes, so Robbie did. was my husband. <laughs> really. oh, and Robbie, crazy? Robbie was your was your was your adopted son on the Mary Tyler Moore show. Well, no, 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 I'm sorry, that was Ted Knight. That was Ted Knight. Yes, that was, right. Yeah, yes, that, that wasn't me. We okay. adopted a, a a Vietnamese or a That's Korean. Right. I was going to say yeah. I remember that. Yeah, exactly. That's right. That's right. Yeah. But uh, it, was 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 Big John, Little John done before a live audience, or was that was that uh, single no. camera? Like, okay. I think I, I, think, I love things be before a live audience. That's my favorite. Yeah. For the podcast, I think we need to just in case anybody doesn't know, you were the original choice for Carol Brady on the Brady Bunch. I was indeed. I was signed, sealed, delivered. The little girls were chosen to look like me. And um, I was wardrobe. I really worked on it for a week or so, going out with the costume designer and getting all the clothes. Wow. And then I was showing the wardrobe to the director and the producer and um, they were acting kind of funny. <laughs> I said, this is the dress for the garden wedding. And then I go change and I said, this is for her going away suit she wears on the honeymoon. And then the third time I came out, I said, is something wrong? And they said, sit down. And Sherwood said, you know, we didn't realize, but New York, Marty Starger at ABC, he has the final say. I mean, it was signed, sealed, and I signed the contract. Oh my gosh. Seven years. Oh my gosh. And, but they did give me something very appropriate. The going away suit. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, Yay. But, you know, Sherwood was so, he fought so hard. They had to rewrite it so that the housekeeper was the funny one because the way it was written originally, the housekeeper was the straight one. I was the funny one. And he saw it more as the Lucy show. And they, he said, if Florence does it, it'll be like the Donna Reed show. But that's okay because it all worked out. Florence was great, was a big hit. And I had my own eight Brady Bunch that were my own eight real children. So, right. Yeah, exactly. It exactly. all worked out the way it was supposed to. It always does. Hopefully. Wow. Wow. Um, I would love to still talk to you a little bit. Bob, I know that you have to leave at three o'clock. But well, I've got a couple of things. Joyce, if you have a few minutes, I'd still love to get your 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 insight on a couple of things. Um, yes. Are you okay with that? I'm okay. Yes. Okay, okay. Cool. Unfortunately, I do have to leave you, but it is. No, it is, don't go. I I have to. I have to. But it's so delightful to see you, and I Thank I'm you. gonna have to watch this episode because I'm sure John's gonna touch upon 
game shows and match game and you you worked with i'm sure my yeah. my, my my darling marcia wallace who i so adore and miss and i'll i'll catch up on how that goes when i watch that's classic with joyce it's, it's nice to see right. you again good to see you john yep bob uh, you know yeah i'm looking forward to seeing you soon on another one bob and i are, are very close friends as you can tell uh, so yeah. all right bob thanks a bunch Take Bye, care, bob. great having Bye. you See you, Bob. So Joyce, here we go. Um, yes. Bob's right, by the way. I still want to ask you about Match Game and that. Um, one of the things I don't want to forget, though, is you were in one of the movies that I have always loved, uh, Airplane. Uh, oh. the, you know, I'm originally from Wisconsin, and the, the, Zucker, uh, the Zucker brothers and Jim Abrams are from back there. And so that always was a, a special spot for me. What was it like to work on Airplane? And did you realize how big it was going to be first of all i didn't want to do it oh. I, thought, I thought it was the most stupid script i ever read in my <laughs> life i said to bill asher i don't want to do this it doesn't make any sense people not baggage but people are coming down the baggage plane <laughs> it doesn't, and, and the plane goes by the first time the second i mean it doesn't make any sense people are driving up on the curb it doesn't make any sense i don't want to do it he said, you're an actress, you act. So I did it. And on the set, the airplane set, we were all going around saying to each other, do you think this is funny? <laughs> no no yeah, way. We we're really not quite, you know, what are we in here? And I remember uh, Ruth Koch, Howard Koch's uh, yeah. wife, the, one of the producers, she hated it. But she hated the script. And I said, I agree with you, terrible. And we went to the first screening at Paramount and we thought, oh God, here we go. And it started and within two seconds, people were rolling in the aisles, including Ruth and, and I were. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So what, once it was all cut together, it really made a difference. Oh yes. <laughs> wow. You. Isn't that amazing? What was it like to work with them? Well, it was weird because I had never worked with the director not being on set and with only one director, because when I grew up, I was told the director's word is God. You don't listen to anyone else. Mm -hmm. There were two directors right. and they weren't on set. They were watching monitors, which is oh. something they do now a lot. Right. And, and I always thought that's kind of sad that they not there because sometimes you see things going on off camera that would be, they really should be shooting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was me. <laughs> right. And plus that connection, obviously, that you yeah, can't right. get unless you're right. right there. And Bill Asher was wonderful directing because he would turn his back to what was happening and listen to the comment, the, the, the timing, the comedic timing. Wow. Which was terrific because that's what comedy is about, truth and timing. It is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. There's a reality there. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Um, so, you know, a couple other ones you had. Uh, you, you mentioned earlier. Um, oh, my gosh. My brain. It's so funny. It went to Ironsides, but that's not what I meant. Uh, Perry Mason. And I thought of Raymond Burr. Oh, yeah. um, he is. He's one of those people in the business that I have never gotten a full sense of. What was Raymond Burr like? Big. <laughs> <laughs> I could hardly put my arms around him. But um, what was strange is when you're acting, you love looking at the other actor right in the eye. That's right. right. Well, he wouldn't look me in the eye. So I kept moving to get his eyesight like this. And he kept moving and I kept moving. Finally, I turned around. He was reading a teleprompter. That's like, oh, how funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Was he, was he, um, I mean, after that, did you find him like, was he interesting to work with or? I didn't really have that much, you know, very few scenes with him. I see. As far as I, I remember. You. Yeah. And, I, yeah. And, when, yeah. And I think it was when Walter Pidgeon was there. And uh, Raymond Burr was in the hospital and Walter Pigeon played, you know, stood in for him. Oh, and wow. that's when 
one day we're in the courtroom and all of a sudden in the middle of a scene, the courtroom doors burst open and everybody was like, what in the middle of the scene? And the one of the crew said, the president has been shot. And I, oh. I mean, I'll never forget that moment. I will we'll all remember that moment. But it was so dramatic being in the middle of a scene in a courtroom and having a crew just throw open the doors and say that. I mean, we, it was devastating. Oh, definitely. I know, and every, I'm sure everything shut down right then. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, we didn't. Really? Uh, no, and we went, when we went to, everybody rushed to the phone. I remember you wanted to be in touch with your loved ones right away. And mm -hmm. it was a funny thing that happened. And then I remember that they decided that it was best to keep going. Uh, he hadn't passed yet. I don't think they knew he had died yet. That's correct. He been shot. And I remember going home that night and stopping at the Methodist churches before you get on the freeway there mm -hmm. on Hollywood Boulevard. And I don't remember. it was packed with people. And um, everybody kind of needed to, they came together to say prayers. And, and I remember it was raining and I remember driving home and I remember the windshield wipers going and I kept thinking, these are the tears of the angel in the world, you know. Oh my gosh. You know, oh my was, gosh. So when I think of the Perry Mason show, it's not always bright. Happy yeah. memories, although I did two of them, but that I can understand that. Yeah. Was uh Walter Pigeon? Uh what I, I he's he would be another person. I, I have very little sense of what he would have been like. Well, he was very kind, and uh, we went to lunch together that day, and I remember we were both so sad. And the one thing I remember about him is he had very big hands. And I remember him putting his hand over my little hand and sort of comforting me. You know, wow. That's, wow. That's what I remember about Water Pitch. Okay. That's pretty touching. That is. Okay. Other one was uh, that I saw uh, was McHale's Navy, um, <laughs> that you had done at McHale's Navy, which. Wow, uh, my sweet a, Tim. Tim what? Conway. I mean, yeah. the, the best. And, and personally, Tim at a party or anything, he he was hysterical. I mean, he he told stories and funny things that happened to him. And he just was the funniest guy and, and fun to work with. And um, he was gonna do a show where he, I think he was a pilot and he wanted me to be the stewardess. Oh, and wow. I was very excited about that. And we had, it was sold and we were gonna do the pilot and he had a cast party before and I went. And the next day, I found out that my agent, William Morris, had turned down the role. He'd you been... have to be kidding me. Nope. Oh, my gosh. I mean, when, even when you say it, I, I'm, I'm laughing inside because I'm already picturing Tim Conway as the pilot, you as the, the flight attendant. It's, I'm sorry, we got comedy gold. We're ready. I know. I know. It would have been wonderful fun. Oh, wow. But that McHale's Navy I did, but it, it's classic. It's really funny. What was uh, what was Ernie Borgnine like? Well, <laughs> you heard yeah. about Ethel Merman's book about him, right? No, I did not. Oh, you didn't? It's a no, blank, I'll have to blank, read that. It's blank pages. Oh my gosh. Wow. Okay. Okay. Well, he was a wonderful actor, I remember. Um, but he 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 and the group were saying some pretty bad words and i i was i i was really square and um i remember there were a group of nurses i was playing a nurse uh -huh. i remember we were being lowered into a boat or something and they were being very rough language up on the pier and i remember yelling out gentlemen there are ladies on board <laughs> Wow. I was wow. like, Joyce, get a hold of yourself. And now they have to say to me, Joyce, there are children around. <laughs> right, right. I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, a whole other angle. You mentioned earlier, you mentioned about uh, being part of the Disney kind of like family or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I know you did Happiest Millionaire. Uh, As a with... matter of fact, Carol, come here. Was she in Happiest Millionaire? she was the writer's wife and one of my very best friends in the whole world no way i want to introduce you to someone 
Okay. Because we're talking about one of our favorite films. Which one? Hello. This Hi, is Carol. Carol sticky head down here. Hi, how are you? That's Carol Carruthers. Nice to know you. Glad we got you connected. And yeah, her oh, I'm so happy. Wrote the Happiest Millionaire. Oh my gosh, literally that is, that's like, I'm, I'm a Disney kid, whatever. I mean, that's one of my favorites. And oh, when, when I saw that. Right for Disney. You oh, wrote the White Stallions. Miracle of the White Stallions and Never a Dull Moment. And, oh. um, gosh. <laughs> Here's the icon and my very dear oh. friend. That's pretty darn cool. That really oh. is. Did, well, did he enjoy that time? Like, like, oh, yes, uh, it was wonderful. Walt was like a father to him, and it was, uh, he had wonderful stories about, uh, about Walt, and it was, it was a very happy time for him. Oh, it that's was, so cool. I mean, I think started. that there's a certain, you know, they talk about different golden age moments. I think that that is a golden age of, of uh, you know, the Hollywood uh, business right then. I mean, that's oh, there's wow. so many films came out of, the, out of Disney at that time. It was wow. Great. What, what, how did he, how did he, I, I guess, I don't mean to say stumble into that, but how did he end up, you know, being, you know, uh, in a situation where he was writing so many of uh, those films for Disney? Well, he was writing for television. He started out as a, as a story editor in Playhouse 90, and then he wrote for My Three Sons and Nanny the Professor, he created, and a lot of television things. Uh, wow. And then uh, he was asked to look at some material for a Disney Wonderful World of Color, which was about the Lipizzaner Stallions and how they were saved during the Second World War. Yeah, yeah. And so he, he wrote uh, his outline, took it in, and uh, the story editor took it to Walt. And uh, Walt said, I want to meet him. He went in for an interview with Walt. He said, I like this. I want to make a movie out of it instead. <laughs> and so two weeks later, we were on a plane to Vienna. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> and then Walt put him under contract. That is really, really cool. But wow. he didn't see me in the role of Rosemary at all. And I, we, we were friends and I go to the house. You were friends her. then already? Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. Okay, we that's were, crazy. We were great friends and he was talking about, we got the cast together, we can't find Rosemary the roommate. And I was 28 and they were looking for a 17 year old. And I oh, kept wow. thinking, <laughs> and I'd sit there squirming at the dinner table thinking, I can't, you know, I can't say anything, but you know. and finally I did. I mean, I, I never said I wouldn't have said what about I had two little children. Right. And and I had just had Mary. Yeah. And so he thought of me as a matron, you know, not not a seven. Right, right. He's not seeing yeah, right. <laughs> so then we went to a uh, a, was it for uh, International Orphans or some fundraiser for, yeah. for children? And Richard Sherman was oh, there. Also a great friend. It, yes. it, it's a small world, right? Isn't it? Yes. The time? Yeah. And he, he leaned over to AJ yes. and he said, is Joyce an actress? And AJ <laughs> said, yeah, she is. So, and he said, she's a perfect rosemary. <laughs> Oh, is that funny? He had yeah, yeah, no I idea. Had to, yeah, yeah, then I had to do, uh, he invited me to dinner, but Jimmy and, and me. And um, I was so excited because I kind of knew what was coming. <laughs> AJ had warned me. Yeah. I'm like, I, I can't believe this. I mean, is this really happening? And we're sitting there. Nothing said during dinner after Jimmy said, I'd like to ask you something. I want to play a, a piece of music. And I, I think you'd be really good in this role. Wow. <laughs> And he played and I went, oh my gosh. And, and then I, I did a screen uh, screen test. I got uh, it. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. But not only that, the day that I was going to record the number, Walt came down from his office and he put his arm around me. And I said, I'm really nervous. I'm gonna go sing this song today. He said, I know. And he said, little lady, I want you to know I have big plans for you. And then he died. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Wasn't very nice. Yeah, oh. yeah for AJ too. He AJ, was well, yeah. producer. And uh, AJ, it was going to be, and I never knew about this yeah. till much later. It was going to be Leslie Ann Warren and I were going to be guides at Disneyland and Tommy 
Steele and yeah. Davidson were going to be our boyfriends. Wow. And AJ was writing it. AJ was writing it, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> wow. Isn't that crazy? I, am I too old now to do that? What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was, was, uh, by the way, was Walt, uh, you know, did, was he a warm guy? I mean, what was it? What, you know, he was, yes. Um, and, and he was, um, wonderful to AJ and, and I met, I met him once. I, I met him a couple of times, but I met him once out at his ranch and, uh, uh, it was absolutely intimidating because all of a sudden there was Walt coming over to talk to me. <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and that that was that was exhilarating, but kind of scary, really. What what do you say to Walt? Thank you for giving my husband a job. <laughs> exactly, exactly. He but was, he was, great, a, he was uh, a warm kind of personality, huh? Yeah, well, but he could also be, you know, fairly stern when necessary. Mm -hmm. So, but he right. believed in keeping families together. He always bought first class tickets for the wife of, or the husband of whomever was working on his shows. Yeah. And I remember uh -huh. Lionel Jeffries mm -hmm. in Kidnapped. Mm -hmm. um, Walt looked at the, the contract and he said, this isn't enough money for this man and gave him more money. I mean, that's how he was. Yeah. I mean, who, who does that? That's not, that's, many, you know, yeah. not yeah. many. Wow, I love hearing that. That's just too cool. Now, um, Oh, my brain is just going. What, what about Fred McMurray, by the way? You oh, would have been around Fred McMurray, obviously. What was Fred McMurray like? Well, he was on the thing as AJ wanted Rex Harrison for the role. <laughs> of, of and, and they got Fred McMurray. And, and, and Fred, I mean, Walt always wanted Fred because Walt saw himself as Fred. Fred was much more of, a, of his kind of guy than Rex Harrison was. Mm -hmm. So, of course, Walt won. Uh, yep. yeah. Of course he did. <laughs> but there was one night we, uh, Leslie Ann couldn't go on the Disney plane to go to the different premieres. And I think it was Salt Lake City. You you can help me with yeah. this. Uh, were you on that one? Did you go? I don't think one? so. You no. didn't go? But well, uh, Richard uh, Sherman was. And um, we were late. It was late screening because Frank couldn't find his toupee. <laughs> 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 and so Richard, do oh, you know this story? No. Oh, yeah. No. So Richard and I went down, and Richard played the piano, and I sang some songs from the movie, <laughs> waiting for him to find his toupee. Oh, my God. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I've forgotten about that. You can't write that stuff. I'm I sorry. Know. That, that is classic. Wow. I, I have to say, what a, what a thrill. So you, you two have literally been friends, like, Forever. Yeah, for probably 50 years. More than no. 60 years. God. That's incredible. That's pretty darn cool. We met in the nursery. Well, yeah, we met in preschool. <laughs> we met, yeah. we, that's right. That's right. I like that. Well, I've got to, I have to, all, I have to segue to a uh, match game for sure. Okay. I, I, listen, I could talk the Disney stuff with you like, like the entire time, but if I don't ask about match game, Joyce's fans are going to be like, why didn't you ever ask her anything about that? You know, but he hey, got two for one here. Yeah. I want to say thank you, by the way. Uh, listen, Carol, that was super kind of you to come on. And I, oh. I honestly, that was some of the most interesting uh, stuff that you just said. I, I just was blown away by that. So well, thank you very much for being more. part of it. <laughs> so that's great. Thank you for the, the opportunity. Really oh, God. It. Please, I a total thrill. I'll so, be with you in a minute. On okay. the match game. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And on, on the, the match, match game. game. Bye. Okay. So obviously, you know, I think of Gene Rayburn, but uh, you know, just like Bob said, Marsha Wallace. What mm -hmm. you were you were on there forever. I mean, I I literally when I think of match game, I think of you. That's nice. Thank you. Because there were so many great people on there that sat in my seat my seat yeah they're really though you you're very uh, synonymous with that show yeah it, it was it was difficult because i'm dyslexic and i couldn't always spell the word that i should be putting in that slot so i right. have to think of something i could spell <laughs> yeah what what was that because like? i'd because be embarrassed i'd be embarrassed he would grab the card sometimes too right gene well he yeah. did this one time when it, there's not another word I could think of, and I think the word was stethoscope. 
I mean, who oh, can tell well, that's a tough one. Yeah. Anyway, I thought I, I, there was no other word. There was, I couldn't think of another word that would work anything. So I thought, well, if I take the card out really fast and put it back there, I'll say it and put it back so fast that he, nobody will see it, right? Yeah, yeah. So Jean came by and I said, stethoscope. And he, he said, oh my God, the blonde got it right. The dummy blonde got it right. You know, and I'd always laugh, but it kind of hurt. And he'd yeah. walk, he walked on by, he took a beat, he turned around, he came back and said, how did you spell that? And oh. I tell you, I was in a hog sweat. It was so embarrassing. And he oh. took it out and he showed everybody. Yeah. And everybody laughed. It was, uh, and I laughed, you know, but right. underneath it hurt so bad because it's very difficult to grow up being dyslexic and thinking that you're stupid when you just have a different way of learning. Did he and, know that you were dyslexic? No, no. Mm -mm. Oh, I didn't. Okay. I and not you. much of it was talked about at that time. Yeah, right, right. We we had uh, Henry Winkler on the podcast as well, right. and he talked about his dyslexia and, um, well, definitely how it shaped him, but also the, he had the exact same, he said the same thing, that that it, yeah. you're assumed to be dumb. Yes. And, yeah. And I still find myself, I mean, I, I, uh, in the executive vice president of the Dyslexia Foundation. Wow. And I talked all over the United States about it and before the royal family in Spain. Oh my God. And I, I just, you would always say to the children, you're not, you don't ever think of yourself as being stupid or wrong. Mm -hmm. You're just different and you do things differently. My son, John Asher, is a wonderful director and he's mm -hmm. got a garden variety of dyslexia. But he's incredible on a set, knowing where to move the camera, where things can I mean, just really, I, I think there's a sixth sense in dyslexics. They just mm -hmm. have to feel okay about themselves to find it. Yeah, I, I, I think you're right. And it, it, it's kind of similar to what uh, Henry, Henry Winkler said. He said the same thing, like it kind of, like I said, it kind of like shaped him, you yeah. know? and, and, uh, made him go farther, you know? Um, yeah, I think I got it. Was it, was it Yale? He grad, I'm trying to think off the top, but he, he, Emerson, that was it. He, he graduated from Emerson. And I was like, how did you ever pull that off? You know? And it was like, he just kept. Well, you learn coping skills too, as you get older. Right. But the problem with it is if it's not caught and usually it isn't caught until about third or fourth grade, your self-esteem has become so low by then. Um, mm -hmm. That's why early intervention is, and diagnosis is so important. Interesting. Uh, before wow. that happens, yeah. Um, on another on another topic, and then I'll I'll, I'll let you go. I've, I've kept you so long, but you've been so incredible. I mean, seriously, I I can't even tell you how much I've enjoyed this. Um, <laughs> another thing I saw, there's an actor that I always had a lot of uh, respect for, at least as an actor. I have no idea what he's like. But was Jack Warden uh, with the Bad News Bears? What was Jack Warden like? Well, Jack lived with us. He was like one of my children. What? <laughs> well, he was Bill Asher's best friend. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. And I got so that I, I almost wanted to put, you know, children's wallpaper in the guest room for him. <laughs> Cowboy pajamas or something. No, he was often living with us. And I tell you, the conversation around the dinner table wasn't to be believed. The joke telling the we would have cook-offs where he would cook something. So I can do it better than that. And the next night I do it and then he'd do something else. Wow. It was really, it was like having a great, wonderful, funny uncle living with you. Oh, wow. How did you, how did you like acting with him? Oh, that's right. I did act with him. It was yeah. fun. <laughs> Yeah, because he's a, he's one of those guys. I keep I'm sorry, he gets on the in, bad news bears. Yeah, yeah, he gets in the scene, and you feel like uh, can anyone? You know, he kind of steals it. You know. Yeah. No, he, wow. he was wonderful. Oh, that's pretty yeah. cool. That's pretty cool. Well, okay, so uh, just to to end, I I usually like to give you know whoever I'm talking to kind of that opportunity. You talked a bit about this 
the, the Dyslexia Foundation. Is there anything else that you're involved in that you would like you know fans to know about or anything like that at present? Yes, Roger and I started uh, with the help of the Rotary Club in, uh, in Glenwood Springs, uh, hmm. the Sopras Rotary Club. And uh, we, we started a center for abused children and it's called the River Bridge and the River Bridge Regional Center. And it takes care of children from all over that area and young adults and families helps counsel them. And Roger and I, we had to raise a certain amount of money. Uh, and I had to talk to the county commissioners and the, the, the city planners and all the chiefs of, of police and the social workers. And it took five or six years to put all the pieces together. And Roger and I kept doing every two character play you could think of to raise funds for it. And then we went before the city commissioners. And I said, if you just give us a, just one room to start. And it went from that to, well, maybe they give us a mobile trailer or something. And I, I could say anything, anything. Finally, they ended up building a little cottage and Roger and I were leaving Colorado, so all of our furniture went into the cottage, and it has it has shutters and window boxes, and it's it's wonderful, and it's helping so many children. and And I think next to having my own children, that's one of the things I feel the proudest about that I was able to do. That's really cool. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, okay, well. Uh, I, I'm really glad that you you mentioned that. That's just kind of kind of one of those things people might not know about you. Um, that and dyslexia. That and dyslexia. Yeah, without a doubt. For Bob, because uh, he, he'll say to me, "What'd she say about Marsha Wallace? What? What was? Uh, what was your? Tell me that as we close. What was your experience with Marsha Wallace? Was well, you, she was in a play at the Hampton Playhouse. Um, right before I came in. I can't remember the name of the play. I didn't get to see it. Mm -hmm. She was a very sweet, dear person, but I didn't have that much contact because I was there when she wasn't there. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Okay. Well, so, Bob's probably going. Bob, oh, that's I, as yeah. far as I know, and the people who, who knew her uh, loved her very much. Okay. Good to know. Well, listen, Joyce, uh, thank you so much. Uh, I just had so much fun with you. You're, you're a, a really real sweetheart. And, uh, and you know what, there, there was no, you know, baloney, you look fantastic. You still have that same energy and, uh, you're just a lot of fun to talk to. So, um, you're very sweet. You're a very good interviewer. <laughs> you got a lot of junk out of me. <laughs> Well, it wasn't junk on this. I mean, once you wonderful. got to hear me and see me. <laughs> yeah, I am too. I have to. I will definitely include that at the top. That was very funny. It was great. <laughs> was funny. Well, anyway. let me know when you do it. I want to see. Oh, I will. I'll, it you know what? I will send it to, um, to, I'll send it on through Harlan. I'll, I'll make sure that you, you get a copy for sure. Oh, he'll have a big laugh. Okay. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure he'll, he'll, he'll love it. You kidding me? Talk about a nice man, by the way. But um, okay. Uh, have a wonderful uh, rest of your day. And I, I appreciate Thank it you. dearly. And I send the best to Carol as well. Thank you. And it was nice spending Sunday with you. Oh, it was very fun spending my <laughs> Sunday with you. All right. Take care. Bye -bye. Thank Bye -bye. you. Hey. If you haven't done so already, hit the subscribe button in the corner of the video so that you don't miss any of our future YouTube podcasts. Also, follow us on iTunes and Spotify and leave us a review.